Hello everyone and welcome to an all new episode of On The Fly. I'm your host, Katie DeFeo. We've got a lot of exciting news today to talk about. Obviously there was a big game this past weekend, we're going to discuss that game. But before I discuss that game, I want to discuss one of the members of the North Carolina Tar Heels that played in that game. We all know her, Jamie Ortega. One of the greatest players in the country. So crafty, so quick. An insane presence on Carolina's offense. I'm not gonna talk about her on the field performance right now. I'm gonna talk about something she did off the field. Recently, as a part of her partnership with Epic Lacrosse, uh, they dropped a clothing line, like a specific Jamie Ortega clothing line, which I just think is so cool. I just had to mention it. Um, I think it's really exciting that we're in a spot as a sport where this is happening, particularly for college players um, with NIL and everything. And I just think it's really cool to see players taking advantage of that new NCAA legislation. I always like to call attention to it. Um, so hats off to Jamie Ortega for that. Additionally, this weekend, gosh guys, the North Carolina Tar Heels took on the Boston College Eagles. Number one BC hosts number two UNC. 6,000 fans at the game, nationally televised. The biggest game so far of the season in the regular season. Let me go ahead and run back quick what I said about this game last week. I think that UNC is gonna go up there and beat BC. I mean, guys, I'm not gonna say that I'm an analyst or that I really know what I'm talking about, um, but I just had a feeling and I tweeted it during the game. I said, these girls, these UNC girls have been waiting for this exact game since May of last year. They've had this circled on their calendar. What I loved about it was BC just did not go away. They didn't go away. They were down by a lot at one point. They were down 15 to nine. You're down six against the number two team in the country. That's a little scary, but they did not get scared at all. They were they were relentless. UNC obviously built that big lead 15 to nine, but then BC came right back. At the end, they made it like a really close game, but UNC ended up winning 16 to 15. Um, one of the things I noticed, and I mentioned this last week, is I said UNC just has a very balanced attack. Like, I think at one point they had nine goals, and the, the announcer said it was they had had seven goal scorers on those nine goals. Like, the type of balanced attack that you want to see um, from a team that's still peaking and not necessarily playing their best lacrosse yet, which you obviously don't want to be playing your best um, until May, especially these top five teams when they're just going to be going against each other probably, in all honesty, in the tournament. So it was a great game. It was a great day for women's lacrosse. It was exciting to watch the two top teams go at it. They battled. Um, it was chippy. There were some missed calls, which, you know, I just think it was a great, great day for the game. Great game in general. One of the things I said UNC had to do was slow down Charlotte North. And they kind of did that until the end. UNC was just on fire. It was a great game. And I predicted it. I'm not going to lie, guys. I predicted it. Uh, that does bring... Oh, one more thing. So you might be wondering, where does Syracuse, aka America's team, fall into this uh, little equation? <laughs> you might not have been wondering, but that's what I always wonder. Because they're my, they're my bandwagon this year. They're my team this year. Ranked fifth right now. They dropped a couple. Uh, we're not going to shy away from it. They've dropped a couple. They lost to Northwestern. They lost to Florida. But like I said, you don't want to be playing your best across in March. Uh, you want to be playing your best lacrosse in May. They're still ranked top five. Everybody knows they're really good. Um, and they've yet to play either BC or UNC. It's going to be good for all these three teams to have played each other heading into ACCs to kind of see where they're at, what they need to adjust. It's a very real possibility that a combination of these three teams will play each other three times. So what I mean by that is Syracuse and BC play on April 22nd, but then they might play again in the ACC tournament and then they could very well possibly play again in the national tournament, the national championship. Last year you had three out of the four final four teams were from the ACC, it was these three teams. So I think that might happen again, but who knows? I don't wanna get ahead of myself, but I still believe in Syracuse. I said last week, I have not ever, I am not, and I will never doubt the Syracuse University women's across team. It's not in my blood, it's not what I do. I'm not a doubter, I'm not a hater. Couples, couple speed bumps, roadblocks, but it's fine. The next Q's big game that I'm excited about is April 9th versus UNC. These are just games I'm excited about in general. April 9th, Q's UNC. That's gonna be a big one, obviously. Two top five teams. Same thing again on April 22nd when Q's goes up to Boston to play BC in Boston. That's gonna be nuts. Two of my favorite offenses to watch. It's gonna be so sick. Such a great game. I wanna go low key. I might go. I'm looking at flights actually currently to go to that game. I'm being honest. Another one, another sleeper game that I'm excited for. April 21st, the day before. Duke UNC. It's UNC Senior Day. Uh, it's going to be vibes. You know, they're going to be all excited. But Duke's a really good team. We know this. Oh, gosh. So that segues me into my next thing. Unleashed, this, this brand, this platform we've built. There's, we also do overnight camps. And we do two a year, typically. We've done two a year for the past couple years, typically. The next one we have is this November. And we just made a huge announcement yesterday. Charlotte North is going to be there. She's gonna be coaching, she's gonna be hanging out with me, vlogging with me, coaching with Lizzie Coulson. It's gonna be a sick 
weekend. In Chula Vista, California, sunny San Diego as they call it. It's gonna be amazing. It's open registration right now. The link is down below. Find out if you can go, you know, book that on your calendar, book that weekend for your calendar, reach out to your buddies on your club team, you know, beg your mom about it, but it's gonna sell out quick. Um, Charlotte, Lizzie, Colson, Katie DeFeo, three of the greatest players to ever do it. Um, we're gonna be offering instruction and, and, you know, and just good vibes. You know, instruction and good vibes. Unleash Overnight is a life-changing experience. Uh, I've had very much fun doing the, I think, three now that I've done. Um, so yeah, we hope to see you guys there. It'll sell out, so don't wait. Yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next week.